Hello, GPT. I've been doing a study about obedience and compliance in America. I hear that many Americans are afraid to express their political opinions in public. Can you extrapolate why? Speak. Certainly. Thank you. There are several reasons why some Americans may be hesitant or afraid to express their political opinions in public. 1. Fear of conflict. Political beliefs can be deeply personal and highly polarized, leading to potential conflicts or disagreements. Some individuals may avoid expressing their opinions to avoid confrontation or heated discussions in public settings. 2. Social stigma. Publicly expressing certain political opinions may subject individuals to social stigma or negative judgments from their peers, colleagues, or even family members. They may fear being labeled, criticized, or ostracized for holding differing political perspectives. 3. Professional repercussions. Depending on their occupation, expressing controversial political opinions in public may have negative consequences on one's professional life. It could lead to biased treatment strained relationships with colleagues or clients, or even jeopardize job security, particularly if an individual works in a politically sensitive industry. 4. Online harassment. With the rise of social media and online platforms, expressing political opinions can expose individuals to cyberbullying, harassment, or even threats. Many individuals may choose to stay silent to avoid becoming targets of online abuse. 5. Political intolerance. Unfortunately, American society at times exhibits political intolerance, where individuals may face hostility or even physical threats due to their political beliefs. This can lead to a fear of expressing opinions openly for personal safety reasons. 6. Cancel culture. In recent years, there have been instances of public figures facing severe backlash, boycotts, or career-ending consequences for expressing opinions that do not align with popular or prevailing ideologies. This phenomenon, known as cancel culture, may contribute to a climate of fear and self-censorship. It's important to note that while some individuals may be afraid to vocalize their opinions, many Americans actively engage in political discourse and openly express their views without fear. These reasons represent the concerns that some individuals may have, but they do not apply universally to all Americans. Thank you. Can you please give me some tips on how to cope when expressing an opinion and when they disagree in a disagreeable manner? Certainly. Here are some tips for coping when you express your opinion and someone responds in a disagreeable manner. 1. Stay calm and respectful. It's important to remain calm and composed during such situations. Yes. Responding with anger or aggression will likely escalate the conflict. Maintain a respectful tone and avoid personal attacks or insults. 2. Validate their feelings. Even if someone disagrees with you in a disagreeable manner, try to understand that they may have strong emotions or reasons behind their response. Validate their feelings by acknowledging their perspective, even if you don't agree with it. 3. Listen and seek understanding. Take the time to actively listen to their argument or point of view. Try to understand their reasoning and ask respectful questions to gain more insight into their perspective. This can help to escalate the situation and encourage productive dialogue. 4. Stick to the issues. Focus on the topic at hand, rather than attacking the person you are talking to. State your arguments clearly and provide evidence or examples to support your viewpoint. Avoid getting sidetracked by personal attacks or going off topic. 5. Set boundaries. If the person crosses a line by resorting to personal insults or harassment, it's important to set boundaries. Politely but firmly communicate that you expect respectful and constructive discussion. If needed, disengage from the conversation or remove yourself from the situation to maintain your emotional well-being. 6. Seek support. Discuss your experiences with trusted friends, family members, or support groups who can provide a safe space for you to express your feelings and concerns. 
sharing your experience and receiving validation can be helpful in dealing with negative interactions. Remember, not all disagreements need to turn into conflicts. It's okay to agree to disagree and move on from a conversation if it becomes unproductive or toxic. Focus on respectful engagement and promoting understanding, even in the face of disagreement. Thank you. That's why I believe that it's crucial to hate the problem, not the person. If there's anything you want to hate, it's problems. It's problems we need to solve and attack, not each other. One of the biggest issues I have is when people interrupt me or talk over me or try to drown me out or when they confuse the issue. That can be a very powerful bullying tactic, by the way. When someone confuses the issue or when someone insults you and makes it about you, I understand how frustrating it can be when someone interrupts, talks over you, or tries to derail the conversation. Mm -hmm. Here are a few suggestions for dealing with these challenges. 1. Assertive communication. Practice assertive communication skills to assert your right to speak and be heard. Maintain a calm tone and firmly but politely assert yourself when someone interrupts or talks over you. Say something like, I understand you have a different perspective but I'd appreciate it if you could let me finish my thoughts before responding. 2. Take a pause. If someone consistently interrupts or talks over you without allowing you to express yourself fully, take a brief pause. This pause can help regain control of the conversation and signal to others that you expect to be given an opportunity to speak. Once there's a pause in their interruption, calmly continue with your point. 3. Stay focused and redirect. It's important to stay focused on the topic at hand and not get sidetracked by attempts to confuse the issue. Acknowledge the attempt to redirect the conversation, but steer it back to the main point by using clear, concise statements that keep the focus intact. 4. Use active listening techniques. Show that you value their input by actively listening to their viewpoints. This can help diffuse tension and encourage others to reciprocate respectful listening. When it's your turn to share your thoughts, politely ask for the same courtesy by saying, I'd like to finish my point, and then I'm happy to hear more about your perspective. 5. Seek mediation, if necessary. If the interruptions and attempts to drown you out persist, and the situation becomes unproductive or hostile, consider involving a neutral third party, such as a mediator or moderator. They can help facilitate a fair and balanced discussion by ensuring everyone has a chance to contribute without being interrupted or talked over. Remember, it's essential to maintain your composure and continue striving for respectful and constructive dialogue. Your opinions and voice matter, so don't hesitate to assert yourself and seek a fair hearing in conversations. I have a right to hear and be heard. That's one of the civil rights I learned when I was in the fourth grade. Unfortunately, it's not respected very often. Um, I've heard people say things like, I don't have any respect for you. Why should I be respectful? How about, how about this? You don't agree with me. But I still need you to let me finish. You know, and talk like that. You know, respect is universal. We all, we all deserve it. We all need to practice it. We all need to learn it. We all need to experience it. Be safe, everyone. And thank you, GPT.